Good morning, folks. We're starting with a terrific article on the effect of carbon dioxide on our natural world. It appears our plants are going to get stronger, build more structure, use less water, and increase rates of photosynthesis and therefore oxygen for us to breathe by astounding amounts. I'm still no fan of pollution, but I'll admit this halted me in my tracks for a moment's contemplation. I highly recommend you read it. Plain and simple here. Breaking monthly records for months on end is one thing, but at this pace, the Antarctic ice is going to break the high ice mark in recorded history when it peaks in a few weeks. Top storm on Earth is the typhoon heading to the south portions of Japan, running up the islands to the south of it as well and drenching the Philippines to the west. The weakening of the system is taking its sweet old time and it will likely hit Japan with some serious force. Coming to the United States and Canada, that low up there is going to play tricks tonight as it shifts eastward and bends the convergence enough to add the cold flow coming down its western edge. This convergence is capable of producing a tornado tonight. Be alert. Wind shows it's a slightly warmer day in Australia and New Zealand except for that convergence dropping on the southwest there. South American observers, you know the drill. The worst of the flooding comes when the low is actually out to sea, drawing the convergence back to the east coastline. Europe. The North Atlantic low is still a player, but what we're actually going to see is more widespread showers than isolated severity today. University of Delaware. You guys have censoring cosmic ray data down to a science. It was amusing when we figured you just didn't get that a solar grand minimum was coming, but you've proved otherwise months ago. Cut this out. Sonoma, showing a gamma burst that rang out just as yesterday's news was uploading. Had a few more of these over the last few weeks. Speaking of minimum-like behavior, the speed of the solar wind dropped below 250 kilometers per second. This must have come close to our record low at one point, and needs to shift up a bit at some point soon. We can only hope this coronal hole enhances that wind, but indeed it lost a bit of power in the equatorial position as it spread north. Easy to see. This will undoubtedly make it less geo-effective, and as that power shifts north, kinda gotta notice the next one incoming to the south red negative, and it's set to erase what has been an extended period of positive influence on our planet, just another two days or so. The solar flaring is still low, but at least she's trying to come back. We indeed have some fairly solid sunspot candidates for flaring, and indeed, it's the southern groups as they have the size. Although this lead group is actually pretty well separated, I'm seeing two perfect delta candidates in the trailing regions, clearly up top but there and the lateral spread where it reaches back to the middle here. This resulted in the tiny ticks upward in the flare activity. We did have one relevant solar eruption, the southeastern filament released far away from Earth's position but served to remind us about our other solar eruption threats. Dr. Uyen returned to fly on the wall yesterday. His portion has been made public as always, and I think this is probably his best one yet. Members, please don't miss the second part either as we do a good roundup and discuss what I can only call the super flood. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.